Cameron, Mike, congratulations. It is now down to the two of you to decide who's going to go home with the title of Forge and Fire champion and a check for $10,000. Now, in this final round of competition, we're going to be sending you guys back to your home forges to build not one, but two iconic multi-tools and weapons from Russia. That weapon is... the Spetsnaz shovel. Originating in the 19th century, these all-purpose shovels were adapted for use by the Russian special forces, the Spetsnaz. These versatile shovels were used as entrenching tools, oars for rafting, and even as cookware. The Soviet military units eventually trained to use the Spetsnaz shovel as a weapon. The short handles made for quick moves in close quarter combats. These shovels featured deadly sharp edges that could be used for anything from chopping wood to slashing flesh or even thrown at a target. This utilitarian tool can be seen wielded in season three of History Channel's hit survival series, Alone. You guys will have four days to work on your Spetsnaz shovels, so good luck. We'll see you in four days. Good luck. My name is Cameron LaFrance. I am 20 years old from Warner Robins, Georgia. I got into metal works thanks to my father. It's really what sparked, no pun intended, my drive for working with metal and fire. I have a lot of steel to move and a very thin blade to forge out, so hopefully all goes well. I start off with these two pieces of leaf spring just to see if I can get it forged down to parameters. And then I notice the piece of W1 that I had laying around. It's two inch round stock, so I know for a fact that it's enough material for the job I need it to do. I'm gonna keep stretching it out and then working on the width. I gotta still flatten out one of my billets. Woo, that's hot. I'm getting the handle and blade junction merged up and then quenched. I'm having to make sure that they're both exactly the same, but still very confident I can do. That looks pretty badass, if I don't say so myself. I feel like I've gotten to a place now to where my blades are ready for the heat treat. Here we go. Sound I want to hear. End of day three, I am very happy to finally have all these shovel heads forged out, hardened. Can't wait for the fourth day to get these fit and finished up and out of here. I've had a lot of good luck in my past with one special girl, so I can go ahead and put my girlfriend's name in Russian on the handle just as a hopeful good luck charm. And if it doesn't work, then I know who to blame. My name is Mike Powell. I'm from Hastings, Florida. I make blades as often as I can, usually a couple hours in the morning before work, and then as much time as my wife will let me on the weekend. She sacrifices a lot of our one-on-one -on -one time for me to be in my shop making blades. If I win the 10K, I'm gonna get my wife something nice that we can enjoy together. I'm gonna forge out these shovels and see if I can win this. I got it about drawn out to length. I haven't quite got it as wide as I want. I'm not sure I have enough material. Go cut me another piece of steel for the second one, drop it in the forge. That ought to do it. About three blows in, Whoa. the whole end of the billet just explodes. Wow! What the heck? Never seen a piece of steel do that. Now I I've got one piece left. This sucks. No way! This is my third attempt. Do over. I take my time, I keep my steel to the right temperature. It didn't explode on me this time, so it worked out. Never built anything like this before. Never even thought about building anything like this before. But honestly, I loved it. It was a challenge, it was a learning experience. It made me a better smith. So I learned, I gained a lot of experience, and overall, it was very exciting and I'm happy with it. I'd say that's a matching set. Ladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. Can you dig it? <laughs> well, I certainly can. Your Spetsnaz <laughs> shovels look ready to go. But what kind of lethal damage can they do? To find that out, I'm gonna take your shovels and deliver some lethal blows on this ballistic stummy. Cameron, you're up first. You ready for this? Oh, yeah. All right, let's do this. All right, Cameron, let's talk about your Spetsnaz shovels here. The weight is right, but there is a little bit of issue with your handles. They're too smooth. A couple of times, it really felt like it wanted to slip out. They deliver nice cuts. Thrusts are very effective. 
And overall, sir, it will kill. Yes. <laughs> All right, Mike, your turn. So you ready? I'm ready. All right, Mike, let's talk about your Spetsnaz shovels here. These are razor sharp. Your handle construction, the one thing I didn't care for was it's round. When it's round, it can go different ways and I have to constantly make adjustments. But because of the ribbing that you have there, I was able to hold on to it quite well. Overall, sir, your shovels will kill. Awesome. All right, gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for the strength test, what we're calling our throw and chop. What I'm gonna be doing is throwing your shovels into our targets and then chopping on our fence here. And what this is about is not what your shovels do to these targets, but what these targets can do to your shovels. Cameron, you're up first, you ready? Yep, let's do this. <laughs> All right, Cameron, for throwing, the smooth handle's great. That's not a plus for chopping, though. When I'm chopping, I'm constantly kind of pulling it back into my hand because it wants to slide forward. This right here, this thin spot mm -hmm. where you've got that hammer, it took a roll right there. Mm -hmm. They threw well. Good job. Thank you very much. All right, Mike, you're up. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. OK. Okay, so right off the bat, the finish work is really nice. Your sockets are really beautiful. They threw great. They certainly chopped fine. I don't see any issues with the edge of your blade at all. These are definitely well-made tools. Good job. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths. This is the sharpness test, the Sandman Slice. Now, unlike the strength test, is all about what your weapons do to the Sandman. Cameron, you're up first. You ready for this? Let's do this. Let's do this. All right, Cameron, no issues with slashing and chopping on the Sandman. Sir, your weapons, you will cut. All right, Mike, your turn, so you ready? I'm ready. All right, Mike, your edges are sharp. Every cut was deep and sliced nicely. Overall, sir, it will cut. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, you guys should both be very proud of yourselves. We put your Spetsnaz shovels through very hard tests. As you know, there can only be one champion of Forge and Fire. Today's champion is... Mike, congratulations, you are the Forge and Fire champion. Cameron, unfortunately, that means you didn't win today, and Dave's gonna tell you why. Cameron, what this came down to was really two things. Your handle being as slippery as it was, and the damage you took in the strength test. For those reasons, we're letting you go. All right. Cameron, you definitely have what it takes to fight in the Forge. You made it from four down to two. It was a close call, but your time in the Forge has ended. I'm gonna have to ask you to please step off the Forge floor. Thank you. Take care, Cam. I wanted to win it really badly to prove myself that I can really go up to the standards as what other ABS master smiths are able to do. In this experience, it's really amazing, and I couldn't have asked for more. Mike, congratulations. That means you are today's Forge and Fire champion, and you'll be getting a check for $10,000. So congratulations. Thank you. I'm feeling amazing, like on top of the world, amazing. 
Mike, I was really impressed with, on the finish you got on those. It's really nice, clean from top to bottom. Well done. Thank you. I build knives for a hobby. From this point on, though, I really want to concentrate on doing real high-end work and just improve my skills.